Well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> who do we have here? Look who has stepped behind the front door this week. <laughs> um, I think a lot of our audience will know who you are, but if you don't, this is my mom. The infamous, <laughs> the infamous, infamous Caroline Russell. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to Behind the Front Door, Mom. Thank you. Should we do a cheers Thank you. to start? Well, you have lemonade, you have water, and I'm the only one that is really drinking. <laughs> so so awesome. I need to fill it up, right? In between takes. <laughs> well, welcome. Thank you. This is uh, this is gonna be a special behind the front door. Um, let me take my sip. <laughs> when you talk to your mother, you definitely need that extra sip. And yes, I still <laughs> I still drink, even though my mom is the guest, so nothing has changed there. Hey. Um so how does it feel? I guess let's just kind of break the ice a little bit. With how does it feel to be behind the front door with your son and your son-in-law? Well, it's exciting because um, this is a new side of you and my son-in-law that I'm seeing now. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. And in addition, I'm very impressed. Uh -huh. Very impressed. Well, thank you. And that says a lot because if you know my mom, she she will complain <laughs> before she becomes impressed. So... Um, no, thanks. thanks. Uh, that does mean a lot to, mm -hmm. um, you know, we we work really hard yeah. um, and have been for a while to not only build a real estate business, but also to start to grow tentacles from the real estate business um, while still creating value um, mm -hmm. to the people that watch and follow and support us. So thanks for that. Mm -hmm. um, where would you like to jump in? I'll, I'll I think you. I'm going to learn a lot today, <laughs> uh, even though I've known you for well, 15 years now. Yep. Um, how we like to start behind the front door is a little background for the audience. I think obviously a little foreshadowing, you obviously have moved to Georgia, but the story of how you got to Georgia is going to be quite, I think, the story. So tell everybody where you're from, a little background on you, and we'll talk about some of the real estate involved up in uh, your neck of the woods up there okay. up north. Well, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, I'm from Philadelphia, born and raised, uh, and uh, just so everybody know, I love Philadelphia. Um, <laughs> and um, as far as uh, career-wise, I'm um, a healthcare guru, I was call myself. I've been in healthcare just about all my life from uh, starting out as a, a dental technician, um, and then I moved into corporate America doing nothing but healthcare. Nice. Um, so that that's the basis of, of of what I've been doing. So so being in Philly, born and raised, um, and I know some of these answers, but I know you don't. Um, have you? Did you spend a lot of time? And did you have a lot of opportunities to venture outside of Philadelphia, or are you truly a Philadelphia girl through and through? Well, it's funny that you should you should mention that because I am a Philly girl. Um, I did not venture out of Philadelphia much. I didn't do that until, and I'll get into that a little later, um, until I made the move to Georgia. Wow. Um, prior to that, I was a Philadelphia girl. I may have gone from Philly to New Jersey, from New Jersey <laughs> to Delaware. Um, never been out the country until recently. Um, so yes, I just, I was a Philly girl. And, um, and that, that um, it's, it's a lot behind that. And what I mean by that is it's not that I couldn't mm -hmm. venture out of Philadelphia. I just didn't have the desire to. Mm -hmm. So I got married early. I had children early. I was trying to go to school at the same time I was having children. Mm -hmm. So um, it was just not my desire to, to, to leave Philadelphia. Do you think that was because... Um of what you didn't know even existed outside of Philadelphia, or did you just truly, were you happy with the life that you had in Philly to the point where you didn't really see anything else? Well, I think that it wasn't that I didn't know um, what was going on, what was going on outside of Philadelphia, because I have friends that traveled outside of Philly and constantly for work or for otherwise. And um, I was just content. I, 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 was married, you know, um, I had my children. I was content. And then I decided I want to do more for myself. And that's when I decided to go back to school and do some things for myself. 
But no, I was actually content the way it was. I just, you know, the little house on the prairie, you know, the little, you know, you first get your house, yeah. you, you leave in your parents and you venture out. Well, I thought that was the life, you know, being married and just having children and, you know, and I'm being that perfect wife. Probably because my father was just such an amazing guy. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get into those stories. <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah, I was, I was content and that's why Philadelphia was, it was okay to be in Philadelphia. And, um, you know, I, it was, it was okay for me. So I'm learning a little bit more today. So talk about you got married, you had kids. Did you own a house at the time or were you renting? What was that first experience like? I got married early, primarily to get out the house. Not to say I didn't love my husband because I did. <laughs> I was about to say, well, um, now you said that. I know we're going to be honest. But right, but I did love my husband um, and I did love him enough to get married. And so um, it, it, it was this... Uh, dating thing that got me. Yeah. Um, you know, he was your he wasn't your typical average man. Of course not. In, in, t in terms of proposal, you know, he, he was not that man to get on his knees and say, "Will you marry me?" You know, is it marry me now or this and that later? You know, that kind <laughs> of. Thing. So you know, we went on and we got married. And so, uh, actually, when we got married, a friend of ours that attended our wedding said, "Hey, you know, I have a house." that um, I rent to you guys. Okay. And I said, you know, okay, we'll take a look at it, you know. It was a nice little cute two-bedroom house. Need a little work, nothing major at the time. And uh, okay. so- Do you remember what the rental rate was? Just to give people context, what year, well, time we, frame are we talking about? Uh, it was $65 a month. $65? $65? When what? I first rented my house, it was $65 a month. For a two-bedroom. For a two-bedroom, basement, Kitchen, living room, kitchen, and a, a huge backyard. Wow. Uh, it was sixty-five dollars a so month. So, what year? Like, yeah. kind of time wise, so what, what year, year was this around? Okay, so this had to be. This had to be in the seventies. Wow, sixty-five dollars. In the seventies, because you were born in seventy-nine. So this is was this before you had Kurt and Eric? This was. This yeah. is. You this trying to really do your math to make sure that I'm Sean. I'm giving your age out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. Um, w yeah, when we rented the house, I did not have any children. Okay, so it was in the seventies um, for sure. Um, we ended up buying that house, and then I had my children in that house. In the house. So let's back up. So you rented the house. Yes. And then, so how did it become an option for you to buy the house? Well, unfortunately, um, my friends divorced. They were going through. Oh, the landlord. The landlord right. They were divorced. my friends. Okay. And uh, and I, at, during my wedding, they offered me this house to rent. But they were, I guess, on shaky grounds then, if you will, but, I, but nobody knew that. Right. So after about a year or two into the house, um, you know, she called me and she said, listen, you know, we're going to separate. And she said, so we want to give you the option to buy in the house. And, and I'm thinking, I don't know anything about buying out. What's she talking about? She's great. You know what I mean? So she said, it's not going to be a big deal. We'll come up with this price. You know, no down payment and all that stuff. Mm. You know, <laughs> we have to do all that. And she said, and, you know, you'll start paying. I'm like, well, who am I going to be paying if they separated or whatever? Mm -hmm. So we went to this lawyer's office. It was like a some kind of room or something. Just like we're sitting around now and a lawyer was there. It sounds like a mafia there. story or something. <laughs> <laughs> it is Philadelphia. So they were sitting around and, um, and, and so, I mean, we didn't know. We didn't know what... what, what, what Sign know, here. Right? We just, so we just, you know, signed the papers. So when you're signing the paper and there's no down payment, how did you agree on what the monthly was it owner financing or was it it was, from a bank? it was owner financing owner it was owner financing okay. and um <laughs> we were paying sixty five dollars a month um right, rent right. and then when we purchased the house it went from sixty five to eighty five Ooh, wow. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then but, we yeah. were in the house for i believe it was around three years of purchasing and um and then uh, she started talking to me about all these other options and, and things like that. And she as in... She, I don't want to give her a name. But no, but I'm saying she, she as, as my the, friend who, who she who and her husband... The house from. Right, right. And so, so she at least stayed involved even after you purchased the house. Yeah, she stayed involved. She Because, because the house needed some work now that we're buying it. Mm -hmm. It needed some work. 
And as you know, as you were coming up, we we were uh, doing things as, you know. AKA, but, we were poor. Yeah, we were, <laughs> <laughs> but no, because we were rich in love. We were had poor in money, well, but we were rich in love because we you you couldn't tell we right. didn't have you didn't know any right would you have known any better like I growing did. up you didn't I did and I tell people all the time so when I grew up um you and daddy were so good about disguising how poor we probably really right. were mm -hmm. that I didn't feel poor growing up and 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 you know as an adult yeah. I actually tell people I was very spoiled um Cosby kid, Cosby nice kid yeah. anything that I wanted I pretty much got anything I needed without question I had. And so growing up like that, you don't get the sense of poor, right? You feel like, well, I can get all my needs won and most, or I can get all of my needs met and most of my wants. So we didn't feel poor. So because the, and the reason why is because you weren't poor. We were. Your father <laughs> and I were. You gave everything to We the gave kids. everything to you. Mm -hmm. So we were the poor ones. We went and wore, we wore the same shoes until they were so dilapidated, you know. But you, you had the best shoes. You went to the best daycare. You went to private daycare. You went to Kepler School. You had all the trimmings. You had everything. Yeah. We were the ones that did well. We we drove the raggedy car that you could hear the muffler dragging down the street before you could get, you know. We did that. That was our sacrifice okay. because we chose to have you. So um, that, you know, you weren't supposed to know you were poor. Well, no, you know? well thank you. So, <laughs> now, did you have, uh, Kurt has a brother, Eric. And yes. And did you have both children in that first house? Yes, you did. yeah, they're three years apart. Four three years apart, yeah. And um, and we had both kids in that house, and then one day, now at at this point, I'm working, um, you know, dental. Right. My, my husband always worked, mm -hmm. but now I'm working. I'm working in the dental field, and um, you know, there's a lot going on with that as well because you have to make sure uh, you have certain shots and you know those right. those, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I'm working and I, you know, making little money now. And I'm making a contribution, a valuable <laughs> contribution. Since my, my dad was like doing it all, you know. <laughs> right. I, I'm thinking I'm doing something, you know. And um, pop goes the weasel. I get pregnant with Curtis. And oops, baby. You said that like that was like not at all. <laughs> no, it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a good thing, but it wasn't a good nah, thing for. The job right. that I was working right. on. How far along were you? What would you say at that I point? I was, I was uh, twenty weeks. Twenty weeks. Okay. I was, I was about twenty weeks. So of course, having said that, <laughs> of course I have to let my husband know. Yeah. Well, he freaks out. That's it. No more dental work for you. Not That's working. it. You're not working anymore. That's the. And I just want to say, so for context, so back in the day when you, you know, out here trying to secure your own bag, as right. what the kids the kid say today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you had my dad that was like, you know, no, you're at risk, don't worry about it, come home. And it's funny because you had the mindset back then, like, no, I want to have for myself and provide for myself, which is crazy because yeah. now on social media, if you don't have these females talking about what a man has to do for them, right. the mm -hmm. type of restaurants they have to go to, to the them. Cheesecake Factory mm -hmm. now. <laughs> so look, y'all need to watch this episode and yeah. take notes around what like, real love is, what real and, love is and what it's about. This really touched my story getting to know you because I got to know you, I think it was around 2009 when we first... Mm -hmm. I went down to Philadelphia, <laughs> and I didn't think she liked me. What is it? <laughs> and I knew there was going to be something special about this woman because there was a block party, and everybody's called ma, ma. <laughs> everybody, everybody, Miss Caroline, everybody Caroline. except you, right? Right. And I'm in the corner, like, okay. And so, but I knew, you know, she was obviously feeding the block, and it was something to experience. But I remember one of the first stories you told me is your experience giving birth to your your son. So if you don't mind sharing with the audience, because I think this this show is about overcoming adversity, mm -hmm. giving people inspiration, um, these journeys that people are on. So if you don't mind sharing what happened. No, uh, no I, I don't, great. I don't mind. Um, I can take you back to when I was, um, when I was first t told that I was pregnant. Yeah. Um, again, um, I still, tried to work. Um, I wanted to better do things, think, do something for myself, but also I wanted to assist my husband as well because my husband worked, but he didn't have 
those corporate America jobs were you making mm -hmm. back then, even if you were making 60,000, 50,000, right, he yeah. didn't have those kind of jobs. He had the type of job where every holiday you get laid off, Christmas time, the worst time, he would be laid off. So I wanted to make a contribution so that we didn't have to feel it yeah. like yeah. that. Um, so I tried to, to, to still work. So um, I'm on public transportation mm -hmm. and I am heading to work. Okay. And I just felt uh, blacked out. Like I can hear you, but I couldn't see you. Yeah. And I'm like, what's happening to me? Like, and um, I can hear people saying, I got to get to work. She's drunk. She's drunk. I got to get to work. She's drunk. See, and they blame me. I was doomed to drink. Philadelphia. I was doomed. I was doomed. And I'm, I'm trying to tell them I'm not drunk. I don't even drink. I never had a drink in my life. And I'm, and I'm trying to, but I'm not talking. I'm not talking, but I'm thinking I am. But I can hear the bus driver say, I can't move this bus until they come and take her off yeah. the bus. People yell, I'm going to be late for work. <laughs> I'm this and that. And I can hear all this, and I'm still see. trying. And this one man, um, I don't know who he is because I, I never saw his face. He was holding my hand. He must have known that I wasn't drunk. Mm -hmm. And he said, you're going to be all right, miss. You're going to be all right. Well, when they took me to um, the hospital, they identified. I always had from birth a heart murmur. Okay. But they identified at this point that, you know, when I got there, that I had something called aorta stenosis, yeah. which is a, a, a heart and valve defect. Mm -hmm. And um, and they, right away they said, I, uh -uh, you're not going to carry this pregnancy. And I'm thinking, I don't know who they talking to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have my baby. My baby. And um, so just to speed it up just a little bit, um, you know, I had to stay in the hospital with Curtis uh, for the last almost four and a half months of my pregnancy. Wow. So, because in order for me to have him, uh, it was just so touch and go for me to be home um, because anything could happen. So they explained that to us and, and uh, um, you know, of course it was, and I wanted to be home. Yeah. So then they came up with this thing where, um, well, perhaps maybe you could go home for a day or two on the weekend mm -hmm. and your husband could bring you back. Kind of. It's like prison. Hey, it sounds like it. So I said, oh, that sounds better than being in that hospital. Because, yeah. I mean, I felt I was paying mortgage on my room. Yeah, all right. So um, I stayed in there and uh, I would come home on the weekend and everything was good. Everything was fine. And then I decided that I didn't want to take a shower. I wanted to get in the tub. Mm -hmm. I get in the tub and his body just sucked out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, what's going to happen here? So I try to get, now keep in mind, I got the baby weight and I was always a little healthy myself. <laughs> so um, I, I'm trying to get out the tub. I can't get out. So this bright idea I had, I said, oh, well, I'll just let the water out. I let the water out, it and it, it felt like I sucked down more. <laughs> <laughs> so then now, I really, you know, back in the day, the tubs were deep. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm trying to put my arms on it, and I'm trying to, uh, but then I realize I have the heart problem. Right. And then I'm saying, I don't want to hurt my baby, yeah. so I don't want to strain too much. So what am I going to do? So I'm, of course, I'm hollering, help! Help. In a house by yourself, in, in, house a, by in an empty bathtub. In an empty bathtub, the bathroom when it's shut, closed tight. So I'm thinking, who's going to hear me? So I must have fallen asleep. I remember being so hungry. Yeah. But I must have fallen asleep in the bathtub. And the next thing I knew, I heard my husband putting a key in the door. And he came upstairs and he said, please, please tell me you weren't in this bathtub all day. And I'm like, yeah, I was in it all day long and I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> hungry. And, um, so I don't know how he did it. But he picked me up out that bathtub as if I was a I'm just going to tell you, 
the Russell man, we just have a strength of body. <laughs> I, I pick Mark up all the time. <laughs> he, he just picked me up like I was a pencil, like like it was no like there was no weight to me or anything. And he, he took me in the bedroom. He set me on the bed. He got a towel. He was drying me off. And now I treat you. He went in. <laughs> Not quite. He went into the drawer, <laughs> dresser of drawers. He got out. I'm saying, but well, what is he doing? He squeezing me down. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what is he doing? He said, you're going back to the hospital. You, you can't stay here. Wow. You can't stay here. He said, you, um, then I looked, he had tears running down his eyes. Oh, wow. He said, what if I didn't come straight yeah. home? He was worried about his He child. said, what, what, what could have happened here? Yeah. He said, so that was my last weekend home, needless to say. Yeah. Um, I did not come back home after that. So now uh, it's time for Curtis to come. Um, and I'm in the hospital. Curtis Jr. Yes, Curtis Jr. It's time for him to come. And uh, and I'm in the hospital now okay. to make sure everything is right. And every, I still went into heart failure. Wow. I still went into heart failure in the hospital. Like flatland. And I went into heart failure. What happened is one of the nurses came in and she said, oh, she said, Miss Russell, you don't look good today. And I'm saying to myself, she got nerves. <laughs> you know, I, you know, this is what I'm thinking. You know, like saying that to me, um, I was experiencing... Uh, a little bit of shortness of breath, yeah. but when you have a heart problem like mine, it's normal. It's kind of like normal. Used to that you, chronic, I got used to condition. right, and so I'm like, who is she? Tell me, I'm a little bit, you know. Um, so she went out and she got the doctor, and they, uh, the cardiologist came in, and uh, and he said, uh, um, we got to get this baby out. She's in heart failure. She's in heart failure. And then that's all I heard is she's in heart failure. Then, the, 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 you know, and I'm like, oh, call my husband. Call my husband and tell him I'm, <laughs> I'm all crazy, you know. And um, and they got him. They got a hold of him and everything, and he came there. And then uh, when I woke up, I was in uh, cardiac intensive care. Mm. Um, I could not uh, see him. Wow. Um, when I looked up, they had a priest standing over top of me, and I felt, oh, my goodness gracious, I'm going for real now. But, you know, when you're Catholic, they have the priest come in and talk to you yeah, anyway. Right. So um, I, when Curtis was born, he was born, he was eight pounds and one ounce. Uh, he was... All head? <laughs> really? Have you, actually, looked at, have you looked at shit for five years? <laughs> he was actually a, uh, um, he was a heavier baby, but he started losing ounces and stuff because um, I didn't realize how sick I really was trying to carry him. Wow. Uh, the heart was struggling. The yeah. heart was struggling. Was struggling. And um, so you know, um, I got to see him um, probably a week after he was born. Um, I would cry every day. I want to see my baby. And they would say to me, uh, well, you know, Ms. Russell, uh, you still have a temperature and we can't let you have the baby with a temperature. And this one day, this one morning, a nurse came in and she said, you know, Mrs. Russell, she said, guess what? You can see the baby today. Well, I thought that was, that was it for me. I was like, it was cloud nine. Right, right. And, uh, and I got to see him and, uh, it was a good thing because after that, you know, Curtis came and he fed him and he did all of those things that I wasn't able to do. Yeah, right. So, you know. That and this was, is when you were living in that first house, right? I was still living in that first now, house. Now, um, to give context, too, for Eric, mm -hmm. um, to give the audience again, that's Kurt's brother. Um, what did the, so you basically went into heart failure with Kurt, right? Right. Curtis, Curtis Jr. Curtis Jr. We're, going to uh, all we're not going to put nicknames, right? Out no, there. we can't do no, nicknames. No nicknames. You, yeah. you told me not to do that. <laughs> um, Just but... for the audience, no, it's very hard for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm interested in this story. So, in addition to, is it your favorite son? <laughs> My <laughs> eldest. Me, I don't know. Um, no. Um, nice try, though. <laughs> trying to give me some points. <laughs> um, you have a brother, Eric. Mm -hmm. And so this incredible story of you going to heart failure with Curtis Jr. Um, if you could tell the audience, you know, now Eric is con being conceived, what, what that story was and what your fears were and Curtis Sr. as well. Well, I think for both of us, Eric really was a surprise. Eric was <laughs> a real, the oops baby. <laughs> Eric, Eric was really a surprise baby. And um, 
And Eric was the one that really put us in a real serious, uh, almost uh, uh, afraid, just so scared for my life. Um, when I went to, well, let me just say this. My husband came home from work one day and he said to me, I think you need to go to the free clinic. The free clinic to us back then was, you know, they had those medical centers on the corner, yeah. what we used to call those free clinics. Okay. And he said to me, I think you need to go to the free clinic. And I said, why do I need to go to the free clinic? He said, because I think you're pregnant. Hmm. But said, where did I'm, that come from? Because, of course, I'm not looking at myself, but he sees me. He said, you're round again. Just like, <laughs> well, like, if you if you all the ladies out there now, I was about to like, say, if, especially if you're in a gay relationship, if I tell you looking a little round today, that I might be divorced. But the thing is, um, I, you know, he would see me as I didn't see myself. Right. Yeah. So he would say, your face is round. He said, your boobs are bigger. You, everything is about you. Basically, he insulted you and said, but, you but I didn't see it as an insult. I just thought, you know, back then, you know, you're in love. What can I say? Well, when they did the blood test, they said, um, you know you're pregnant. And I said, pregnant? He said, yes, you're pregnant. So I said, okay. I go home and I tell him, he said, I told you, I told you. So I now set up an appointment to go see the same um, um, OBGYN doctor that I did with him, okay. with Curtis. And uh, she says to me, um, she says, um, Caroline, you're pregnant. And she, and I was 16 weeks. 16 weeks pregnant. And uh, and she said, it's going to be really touch and go. She said, you got to make sure you keep all your appointments with your cardiologist, blah, 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 blah. I said, okay. So now I go to see the cardiologist. Instead of, I'm seeing my regular doctor, I saw a substitute because she wasn't available. Okay. And this man was so, so like, rude. He says to me, he said, um, you know, you're pregnant and you're going to die. <laughs> wow. That's wow. exactly what he said. You're going to die. And I said, what? He said, um, you realize you have a bad heart. Your heart is weak. Your valves leaking. He went through a whole nine yards. And I mean, of course I knew these things, but that's why I was being treated right, for them. Right. And, uh, he says, uh, he says, why would you even let yourself get pregnant? You have all this crap going wow. on with your heart, and this, that, and the other. I remember grabbing my purse. I remember um, I still had on the the, the gown yeah, thing okay. that they gave you. I remember grabbing my purse and grabbing the gown. I remember taking the elevator up to the fourth floor because that's what cardiology was. Yeah. And I'm screaming. I'm screaming. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And um, Jesse, which was my cardiologist assistant, she came out. She said, what's, what's going on? And I was trying to tell her. My cardiologist came out, and I mean, he turned bloodshot red. I mean, he was just red the whole, he was just red. And um, he said, I need you to sit here in this room. It was his office. Mm -hmm. He said, I need you to sit here for a minute, and I need you to calm down. He said, and I'm going to come back in, and then we're going to go, you know, we're going to go downstairs. So we go downstairs. I sat there for maybe about a good 45 minutes or so. I didn't realize at the time he was seeing other patients and that's what the wait was about. So um, we go downstairs and I remember him saying to that doctor, how dare you? How dare you tell somebody they're going to die? Yeah. How dare you? Where did you, what medical school you were? I could just, he was just going on and on and on and on and on. And, um, so I remember the doctor saying, well, I didn't mean it like that. He just kept saying, I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean that. I was just trying to ask the question. I, he was just trying to get out of it. And I remember my doctor saying, I tell you what, you get that baby here and I'll keep her here. You don't worry about her. You worry about that baby. Wow. I remember the doctor saying that. And so obviously Eric is here. Yeah. Eric is here and Eric came with not without some difficulty. Um, again, I stayed in the hospital with Eric, like I did with we'll Curtis to, we'll Jr. We'll have to have him on as a guest, and he could talk about all <laughs> his different <Right. laughs> So Eric came. Um, fortunately, uh, other than his drinking problem, <laughs> uh, Curtis Jr. did not come with medical issues. 
Uh, Eric came with some medical issues. Uh, he came with. Uh, oh, I don't want to discuss his medical issues on behind the front door without him. No, 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 no. They're not. I'm not saying. I'm not going to name what he had. Yeah. It's not. It's not fatal right, or not. Right, right. But um, he did come with some medical issues other, that Curtis didn't have to endure. Mm. Uh, so uh, that um, that made Eric. Um, a little bit more sensitive to everybody because they felt, oh, that poor baby, you know. So wait, that makes Eric her favorite son. <laughs> no, it does not make, it makes Eric the baby son, which is what he is. Oh, is that what it is? No, okay. I love both of my children. Absolutely. Per um, perfectly can answer. And so how much longer in the house did you guys, how long did you stay in the house at that point yeah. before you decided, okay, maybe we've outgrown it, it's time to move on to something else? Well, it's so funny you should say that because the decision was my, not mine that I outgrew the house. It was yours. It was mine? Yes. You really? Were, oh, yes. Well, I'll hear this story. I got it. Was his, it was his decision because he said, I can no longer stay in the same room with Eric with these Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> A Ninja Turtle fan. Eric was like with the with the X-Men and the, the robot things and, you know, and all, you know. Uh, Curtis grew up. A lot faster than Eric, in terms of Eric was still playing with toys, and and Eric, Curtis was looking at him like, really, you know, that sort of thing. Three years, age, age and they were only three years apart. Mm -hmm. um, but he never, he never um, criticized Eric. Like mm -hmm. he never said, "Why are you still playing with toys?" He never did that. Well, we've always been different. I mean, yeah. we even growing up, we were three years apart, but we always managed to have our own sets of friends, mm -hmm. our own. We just never really shared a lot of the same common right. interests and all of that. So, because right. Eric would be down in the in the middle of the block, we used to have a tot lot where kids would go and play. Eric would be down there playing cowboys and Indians yeah. with, with the guns and stuff. And this one we like really, you know, like why is he down there? Um, that sort of thing. But um, he did, never knocked him for that. So, um, did you? So, with the Ninja Turtle story. You, did you feel like you had also um, outgrown the house now? Because you were said it was a two bedroom. Well, I mean, it was a two bedroom house. The, yeah. the one bedroom was big. Uh -huh. It wasn't like it was a matchbox. Right. It was a nice size. Nice size. We had the two beds in there, and we had dresser drawers and things like that in there, and they had room to move around and stuff like that. So it wasn't a um, what can I say? It wasn't it wasn't an emergency type thing for us to to just pack up and move. So but how did but how did the second house? come about then? Well, this, well, because my wonderful son here, every day, he made it a point of saying, well, mom, if I can't get my, let's move it, I, can I move it to the basement? Can I, I, I mom, I can't I'm do this. I'm always about bringing solutions. <laughs> he said, I, can we move, people's money. I, I want my <laughs> own room, mom, I want my own room, I, can I move in the basement? And I just had a thing about him I mean, it wouldn't have been a problem for us to fix the basement, mm -hmm. but I just didn't want him in the basement because back then it was just different than right, now. Right, right. So then I embarked on just going out looking for houses, which, by the way, my husband was not feeling. Now, when point. you say looking at houses, do, you know, since this is a real estate context program, uh, did you have an agent? Did you go just well, looking yourself? How did, how did that A girl at work told me about my agent, she said, you know, this woman is nice, you know, she was from Lebanon, Okay. my agent, and um, and she's really good, and, you know, she'll help you, and this, that, and the other, and she came over to the house, and she sat down, and she talked to us, and she told us, nothing that, like what you guys do, nothing, right. she just told me what, you know, you know, uh, um, she didn't ask me what areas I'm looking for, or whatever it is, she just said to me, um, how many bedrooms are you looking for? And I told her, you know, and she said, uh, she didn't ask me, did you want a kitchen, dining room? She didn't ask me any of those questions. How about the financial questions? Did you get, was it back then? This well, is now the 80s, right? It, so, like, that, what, what was No pre-approval stuff. Anyway, let me go, let me go yeah. back a step further. So, when you got the house, it was, I on guess, it was basically on a finance. Right. So, as you described earlier, you were set in a room, you decided to pay No, the, 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 the uh, owner financing was... was for the, the house first, that you were in. The first, first house. house. Right. But what I'm saying is, so now, fast forward, you're at the point where you're ready to sell that house to buy another one. Right. So I'm assuming the process was totally different now because yes. you and daddy were not doing owner financing. You were actually right. selling your house. Right. So if we can go a step back, how was that process of selling your first mm -hmm. house? Through owner financing. Through owner, like you yeah. bought it through owner financing. And you had mm -hmm. purchased it outright at that point? When, yeah. By the time, this is so funny. 
by the time I got ready to buy uh, my second house, the first house was paid off. Paid off. Oh, wow. So it was our house. So when it was your house, did you have to hire a real estate agent at that point to sell the house? Or how did you, what was your process around selling the house? The realtor that was from Lebanon that my girlfriend introduced me to, she sold the house and she sold okay, and okay. She, she did all of it. Okay. The problem is because we didn't know, we just didn't know. I didn't know. When um, she put the house out there on the market, um, a real estate company what wanted to buy the house. Mm. So I said, okay, fine. I don't care, you know. Um, but what I didn't know is <laughs> when a real estate company bought the house, we had no place to live. Oh, and it wasn't explained to you. It oh, wasn't explained wow. to me that, okay, now you got so much time to be out of here wow. because if you son this out. We, I didn't know any of that. So what happened as a result of that now is um, I'm paying rent to the real estate people that bought the house while my kids are being bust all over the place because, you know, I'm, I'm, I found another house. It's in another location. Yeah. It's in another school or district. Now you got to go for a mortgage. Right? And I'm doing yeah. all this. Oh, and in the same time, I got to go, well, I got to get a movie. I got to right. do all of this stuff. And, you know, my husband wasn't uh, savvy like that. And I would just know. guess that you're, at this point, paying more than $95 a month for rent now that the company has bought it out and they're asking you for the money. Yes, it went to 250 250 Oh, wow. It went to 250 <laughs> But, 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 but to us, that was a lot. Yeah, yeah. To no. us... Let me ask you this because, you know, for the context for our agents, you know, and, and now we're in 2024, right? So there's W-2s, there's 1099s. Like, what questions were they asking you? Because like you said, every Christmas, your husband was getting laid off. Mm -hmm. Were you back working mm -hmm. again? Were they looking at your income? They, looked at, they yeah. looked at both of our incomes. Okay. They looked at both our income and they combined both of the incomes. They did, okay. And, um... And then uh how about credit scores? What what were they looking at back um, then? Um if if they looked at the credit score, it was I don't know if it had a significance like it does now. Um, I don't know. Right. But I know they looked at my pay stubs, okay. they looked at his pay stubs, they combined it, they looked at um they looked at I, I, I don't remember them asking me for a W two. I don't mm -hmm. they may have, but I don't remember that. Payment history maybe. Um, exactly. Like that. Mm -hmm. And um and then they just told me um I was we were approved for the house. Wow. And um, they, it, like what? now, you got to have a certain amount of money in the bank. Right. Nah, I didn't have that any of that. <laughs> I didn't have any. I didn't have that any of that. You know, money's in the bank and all. Although it's so funny, because I was so uh, um, gun ho and, and and ready to move because of this one here. Uh, I like how she puts all the the expense on because me. It, because as a young kid. For him to be so bright and so smart and knew exactly what he wanted, yeah. I want to move. Yeah. I don't want to be in this room. Like, I want my own room. I want my own space. A lot of that is how I am today. Yes. You say? I'm I very want, much I like, want, want. Oh, no, no, this is not, we got <laughs> no, it's not so much of that, but I've always been that person. But yeah. like, once I set my focus once on that's said, what right. I want, mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to get. So it's funny how that and, and he just, and so me, I just set out to, you know, yeah, I know I have to get a bigger house, but the mindset was he has to have his own room. He has to have his own room. He has, you know, and that's that's what happened. So um, when I I was looking all over the place, I was looking outside of Philadelphia. I was looking in Yadin. I was looking all over these places. I was, and then I just said, you know what? I'm just gonna buy anything. And my brother, bless his heart, he said to me, "Okay, if you find a house because you." still had to get an appraisal. Right. He said, I will have the house appraised. I will pay for that. Oh, Not that it was that much money back then. <laughs> but anyway, he, this house I found in Yaden, I said, you know, I'm going to do this house. Well, when, when my brother had it appraised, they found that it had a crack foundation. Oh. It had a lot of issues, major work. Um, so that went down the drain. No, no house there. And then... The realtor showed me the house on 22nd Street, but she showed me the house across the street. Mm. Oh. Um, when she showed me the house across the street, the house was big and spacious, four bedrooms. I'm like, oh, Curtis <laughs> Jr. can have his own room. You <laughs> like know. the Jefferson's moving on up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
but that house also had a cracked yeah, foundation. Was, wow. And so now, while I was looking at that house, you know, she calls me and she says to me, uh, after seeing that house, she called me, she said, there's another house right across the street, just went up, wow. just went on sale. So for context, the first house you bought cost how much, the sales price? If I tell you, you won't believe it, $6,500. You mean 65000 Sixty-five, six thousand five hundred dollars is what they sold the me the house for. In wow. the seven, that's how much the house. That's how much my friend sold me the house for six thousand five hundred dollars. And when you sold it, how much did you make? Sixty-five too, or did you make more? No, than when that? I sold my house, that house, I made. Uh, I sold it for forty-eight thousand. Wow! See, that's how the power of real estate. Right, and so sure. now you sold this first house for forty-eight thousand, and you're ready to buy your second one. Right. How much was the house at that time when you bought it? The second. House? The house. On 22nd Street, yeah, uh -huh. the house on 22nd Street was 47.5. Wow. And so you had a mortgage on it. And you, you had a mortgage. That was your first mortgage, mm -hmm. right? How and much well, How much was the interest rate, just to give people context, if you remember, or at least a range back then? I did it twice. I When I first went into, again, Purchase. just listen to people talking to you because I did not know. Yeah. I didn't go into a fixed mortgage. I went into that buy a adjustable, thing, adjustable, adjustable rate. rate. So when I went up to the adjustable rate, it, I went in there with a, like a four point something and it went all the way up to seven something. Mm. I refinanced it. And when I refinanced it, I went a fixed mortgage and it took it down to two point something. Wow. Wow. That's, that's how it all fluctuates. So. And that's how it made it so affordable to the point that when we went in there, I redid that house. And I want to get, and we'll get into it, you know, as we continue along the conversation. But for context, it's interesting because you sold the first, you bought the first house for $6,500. You sold it for forty eight. dollars You then buy the second one for forty seven. Forty seven five. Which is the house that, you know, I, I left to college from, right? Mm -hmm. And so this house, I remember when we bought it, I remember sort of that process. So we'll get into it later on to find out what you actually use. Well, you sold that house to get the house that you have now. Exactly. So literally you have gone through so many different errors and periods within real estate that you've always been able to significantly leverage your mm -hmm. asset because to buy something at 6,500, basically flip it to 48,000, basically flip that. And I don't want to give it away to what you sold it for to get to Georgia. Right. You made some really good, really good investments. Absolutely. Absolutely. I really did. Now, let me ask you though. So we've had this discussion, we've had other guests on the show where I've said, I think that it's a generational thing where a lot of folks or a lot of people in our generation and the younger generation, we will just pick up and move. If we don't like the walls, we've looked at the walls for too long, mm -hmm. we will pick up and move. Yeah. Um, and back then I've said, I think you and people in your generation, that really wasn't why you moved. You didn't right. move because you didn't like the wall color, you just said, I'm gonna paint the walls and stay mm -hmm. in my house forever and ever. Um, did that ever change for you at all, like from one house to the next house, or were all of your moves calculated just based on, based on a different need? Like I, my kid needs a bigger room right. or this one needs that. Was it? Did you ever fall into the, I wanna move just because it no. feels like it's something I should be doing? No. No? No. I moved from one house, the first house, to the second house because, like I said, it was always about the kids. Mm -hmm. And because you wanted your space and you were growing up, my goal was to give you that space. And um, and to move uh, from Philadelphia to relocate here in Georgia would not probably have happened if my husband did not pass away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when my husband passed away, as you know, your father, um, it still took me some time. Oh yeah. To 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 wrap my arms around. Um, Leaving the mean gritty streets of Philly. I, I got a, I, 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 I need yeah. to, I, that I, I I think I think though the, the the reason why I was prolonged even after your your dad passed is because um, I felt I was leaving him behind. I felt that as long as I was there in that house. He was there. Um, even even when he passed. When he passed, I just felt I just felt that he was still there because that's the house that we built together. Yeah. We were there together. You know, keep in mind, you know, I met your father when I was 13, turning 14. Mm. 
Yeah. You know, he was my childhood sweetheart. I married him, you know what I mean? Right up until his death, we were yeah. we did together, never separated at all. So, I mean, you know, so moving out that house, it was like leaving him behind, you know, because if he was alive, I would never have been able to move anywhere without him. There's a lot of parents out there that are thinking like schools are important and stuff like that. Talk a little bit about that process. I believe you sent them to a private school, right? Mm -hmm. um, the sacrifices that you have to make because sometimes people in real estate, they're like trying to get their kids into a certain yeah. school district mm -hmm. um, and they have to balance the affordability and their needs. Here in South Philly now, um, safety is important for your kids. It's a different time frame back then where you get to know your neighbors and all that kind of stuff. Talk a little bit about what that second house and the memories you ma you made and how important it is to like lay down roots and provide something for your your children. Well, I think that moving into the second house, it's still it's still back then was nowhere close to what. And I don't mean this in a real bad negative way for anybody that's li living in Philadelphia, because I love Philadelphia. But I think that back then. Um, it's no comparison to now where if, if I was going to, if I was a young person now yeah. and I had children school age, um, I would be so concerned, not even so much about the schools, but getting them to the school Right. where with them, it really wasn't that issue because, um, I don't know how the public schools were there because they never went to public school, but. I don't think they were that bad where if you wanted to learn, you couldn't learn. Right. Where, if, where I think now hearing from my friends, grandkids and things like that, it's such a disruption yeah. in the school system now. Yeah. We didn't have that back then. Right. So I don't think the emphasis was put on the school district right. they were going to be in. It was more about the neighborhood or my kids going to have friends. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. It wasn't like it is yeah. now. And you were able to, like, the kids were playing in the streets and you'd be able oh, yeah, to go the, back it's totally and different. Yeah. And it's totally different. different because, like, my neighbor, when she saw him doing something and she was able to pull him in and say, what the heck are you doing, you yeah. know, that sort of thing. When now, the neighbor, you talk to my kids or talk to them, they, the neighbor beat you up. Both of my boys were very well liked in school, very well. Curtis was always, everybody thought he was going to be a news person. And but, look at me now, behind the front door of my yeah, own yeah. podcast. He, all, he always <laughs> wanted to. He's a little to, journalist now. Yes, he always wanted <laughs> to be that spokesperson. He always wanted to be. So in school, they would always pick him to speak and those type of things. That I was they, also super that a very deep voice when I was yeah, young. My so voice they, changed you know, very early. early. I think I I think I hit puberty very very early TMI TMI but I hit puberty very early and so everybody still had a little kid voice I had this real deep husky mm -hmm. voice. Curtis was always the one that wanted to think about something. Most kids when they outside playing and they doing something they don't strategize they just do it. Curtis always got the pick it. Well, wait a minute. If you put it over there, you could do it over there. No, don't put it there. But they do it. You know what I mean? And he was still a kid. Right. That's what I mean when I say he analyzed things, he worked through things, um, but he always knew what he wanted. It sounded like a household that was definitely fun, interesting, it was fun. but like that's what home ownership to me is all about. Mm -hmm. You're making more money. You have a different things that you can give your your kids and everything like that. Um, what was the uh, experience now being a homeowner with this in the South Philly home? Um, did you, were you able to like pay off that mortgage any faster now that you had this new career that you were entering? Well, yeah. It, 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 well, yeah, the answer to twofold. Uh, I was able to, um, working in healthcare afforded me uh, to be able to pay off the mortgage faster. Mm -hmm. um, when I first got the house, I think I mentioned to you, I had that adjustable right, thing. Right. And then I went went back and I refinanced and I got a fix. Fixed rent. When I went back to do the fix, I changed it from 30 to 15. So you knew right from the beginning that you did not want to have a 30. Exactly, right. exactly. And so, so let me ask you this. So when you were shopping for the house, mm -hmm. when we go back to thinking about a budget, does your budget include the number of what the mortgage payment would be 
if you could pay it off in 15 years or was your budgeted amount based on the 30 year mortgage payment? It was based on, my budget amount was based on the 15 because I didn't want to pay for a house for 30 years. Oh. So in my mind, I, I budgeted for that. Um, what I didn't anticipate is the fast uh, movement the the, the 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 constant um uh what, what do you call it uh inflation and just no the... no you're I, I kept getting promoted oh okay. oh like you're growing you're right you're I, growing, I didn't you're that fast. came fast for me, for me right. that came fast for me i mean i'm a fast learner i'm a quick learner but that was fast for me because when i went when i entered into healthcare. I went into a big company uh -huh. and um, I went into their company as a coordinator and I coordinated their dental program for them. Okay. Because that's what I do. I, that's where my schooling was in dental. It came very easy to me uh -huh. to do that. Uh -huh. But to them, I was like, you know, this, Pardon the, the scene. I was like yeah. Miss 100, yeah. Yeah. you know? And so, you know, I went from being a coordinator to being uh, a, a middle manager. Okay. And then I went from being a middle manager to being a director. And then I went from being a director to a vice president. Wow. What and a so, story. so your money went from like right. this to like way up here somewhere. So I was able to save monies. I was able to send you guys to college, your father and I both. We were able to I'm say, glad you gave him some credit for say, something. Yes, we, we, were, we did it together. We did it together. Um, you know, um, we were able to do things uh, that we weren't um, able to do before. Like your father got a new car every two years, uh, things like that. Um, you know, I was always playing James, so cars meant nothing to me. So you, so at this particular point, you were, as they say, living the American dream. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. You probably you, went from... We talked about the beginning. I hate to use the word poor, right? Because poor comes in like just financial, but you were well, wealthy poor, as far as love. Poor is a term right. that should be rooted in people's reality. reality right? right. Because the thing about it is, if you're poor, you're poor. Right. Like the first step is acceptance. But then the <laughs> learnings are like you worked your way up and then you networked and you, you know, built relationships. So I think for the audience out there to know like, so many times in, in our industry, right, we get a lot of first time home buyers mm -hmm. and they all want single women, single men, people that haven't had kids yet planning to. Why do you need a five bedroom you house? You know why? why do you I need have the these $500,000 houses? And to hear somebody's story about working and making progress up the ladder, even in their real estate journey. And it's sad to say this, but I think it's because the difference of time that we live in. I think that, and I'm not just saying this because you're my mom and you're the guest on our Passion. podcast, right? But I think there's a difference in how yesterday's woman thinks like today's woman. Sure. I mean, how many days if we go out on our social media feed and you have women that are actually, in my opinion, embarrassing themselves, talking about what they need a man to provide for them mm -hmm. and how they need those things provided. Yeah. And the establishments, if it's not this restaurant, it has to be this restaurant. Yeah. And I think there's just a shift in the mentality of how women think. You, thankfully, you're my mom, so I have a strong like role model to kind of look at. Like You knew that there was more for you mm -hmm. to see, to get, to achieve, to obtain. And you didn't sit back and say, well, I'm married now, so it's the responsibility of my husband to make sure that I get those things. You said, well, you know what? Let me chip in where he's weak and let me chip in and be his weakness to, to make sure that we don't have those gaps as a unit. Yeah. And I think that speaks volume with just the generational differences that we're in. I yeah, mean, that's, that's a really good point. I think so many times, you know, in today's society, it's not about the partnership. It's not about lifting mm -hmm. one when one's down. And to see that evolution in this story really is, should be an eye-opening learning for a lot of the audience. I hope agree? so. I hope, I hope so. But I think that, you know, I hope that people can really look at you, right? Not just because you're Milana and you're beautiful <laughs> and all those good things. But I hope they can look at you as an example. Yes. It doesn't have to be their example, but as an example of, like, you don't have to sit back and depend on a man especially or anybody especially 
to help you get what it is that you want. You just have to work hard, know that's what you want, and then go after it. Yeah. Because there, there were there were some areas in my growth that affected my marriage. Mm. Uh, 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 not to the point of any kind of divorce or separation or anything like that, but there were points like, you know, as I moved up the corporate ladder, there are all sorts of affairs I have to attend and black tie affairs. My husband wasn't into that, mm. you know? So I would say to him, we compromise. You go to this one, but you don't have to go to the next one, right. but you're going to one of them. Wow, compromise. Okay. That's a so, word that a lot you of know, people You're remember. going to one of them, so you right. can pick and choose right. that we have one on the first and we have one on the 15th. You're going to one of these. So which one you want to go on? So, and that's how we worked it. We worked it so that he didn't go to everything. Cause I mean, he just wasn't that person. You know, he would go in and, you know, and shake your hand, but you can't push him too far. Right. So, you know, we would compromise. You go to this one, you go. Now there are some where he had to go. Right. It was just, he had to be on my arm. It right. was black tie. I'm not black tying in there by myself. Right. You're going. Yeah. Um, he would put on, he would dress up very well, clean up very well, go in there with his tux. You know, the CEOs all knew him, but they knew him to the point, don't push him. Right. They yeah. knew him enough to say, um, hey, Curtis, how you doing? And he said, I'm all right. I'm okay, man. Like, okay, stay away. Don't keep coming <laughs> so over here's here. So here's a question I have for you. So now you are well-established or fairly mm -hmm. established in healthcare, mm -hmm. you know, and... Um, so as you said, like your professional growth and money has just blossomed. Mm -hmm. How does that work as far as now you're in this house together, mm -hmm. but there are things that you clearly are not able to afford to do to the house that probably daddy is not. And you both come from the same generation where the man provides for the woman, but now the woman is sort of ahead of the man as far as what you're mm -hmm. able to revive versus what he can. Did that cause any? Did that cause well, that's what I said that you know in, in our marriage there were some bumps in the road because of those type things. Mm. But your father's not a dumb wasn't a dumb man either. You know what I mean? Um, as long as he got that car every two years, he didn't care if I made a million dollars. <laughs> and he didn't care. Are um, you trying to say my father was shallow? I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> loved him to death, but you know he was okay. He was okay, and I never. And let me say deliberately, I never made him think that he was my trail. Mm. I, 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 I tried to work on him. Like, I would still go run things past him. Hey, babe, you want to do this? Or you think you like this or whatever. Knowing in my mind, it's best that you say yes, because I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> no, but, that's not sound that. like. <laughs> but, what do you mean, who does that sound like? <laughs> but, <laughs> you know. At the end of the day. It is what I want. Right? But it is. It, it, so I'm saying because. I'm going to be honest, you know, there, there were times when I would say to myself, well, I'm out here working, making all this money. I'm going to do this anyway. You know, like when I got the new kitchen put in, what's wrong with the old kitchen? I don't want the old kitchen anymore. I right. want a new kitchen. Right. So those type things like, and he would say, you just want to spend money, money that you don't have. You just want to spend money. I and feel like I'm listening to my marriage on camera. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to spend money. It is unnecessary. You don't need that. That's what you want that for. This kitchen is fine. That floor is fine. This chair is fine. And I used to always say, just because of this book doesn't mean you don't have, you right. know. But he, you want it better for yourself. I just wanted, family. I just felt like, and at this point, I'm, I'm well known in the industry. Yeah. I had CEOs coming to our house. I had, People of all. Well, you are a CEO. You so know what I mean? You so I have all these people coming and, you know, stopping over, whining and dying. And I'm like, uh, and I don't, I can't get a new kitchen, you know? Um, so I did go through that little phase a yes. little bit. Now, now as you were evolving and, and salaries were increasing, your network, your professional network was expanding. Um, did you ever go from wanting a new kitchen to I want a new house? Because a lot of times what right. we experience now is right. once people get a job now and they make $50,000 more, they're automatically saying, I want a bigger house now. Was that ever your thought? Well, it wasn't my thought because um, uh, by the time uh, I really got out there and was really, really doing my thing, as you know, you were going to college, you went to college and stuff. So, And you weren't making any signs of ever returning home to live. So, you know, I felt at that point, um, I made it. My kids are college, they done, you know, they are on their own, they're doing their thing. Now it's my turn. Um, I didn't think about um, moving or, or, or doing anything like that because 
all I was thinking about is, okay, I got this money now I can save it. Right. You know, I could increase my 401k. I could do this. I could do that. So no, initially I was not Smart, thinking actually. about yeah. moving. I was just thinking about, because you got to remember, I had this money that I never had in my life right. and I earned it. Nobody gave it to me. Right. I earned it. So I felt like, oh girl, pat yourself on the back. You did good. So 70s, you got married. You're having your first child, a big-headed child over here. I don't know what that. Well, your head is not much smaller. If at I do all. have a big, I have a big meatball head. You do. I think for a lot of people out there, and you'd agree too. 2020 was not only a tough year for our family, you guys as well, but for the nation and the mm -hmm. world. COVID mm -hmm. was being discovered um, around that March time frame. You know what happened in March of 2020. Well, March of 2020 is when I lost my husband. And it was, though he had been sick, it is proven that you cannot plan for death. No. Because even though my husband had been sick for a few years, and I watched him through the years go downhill, study going downhill, when he died, it was just as if I didn't even know he was sick. Mm. Um, it was, it was devastating. And, you know, there was, I realized at that point when he passed that there were things that he did for me that I, I didn't do for myself. And I didn't realize those things until after he was gone. Yeah. And I didn't have anybody to do those things. See, so here you are, you know, now you haven't reached a level of success in your career. Mm -hmm. You had a paid off house. You had raised your children and, I'm sure, like any relationship, you annoy each other, you get right. on each other's mm -hmm. nerves. But that that moment um, when he passed, I think for the audience out there that has ever lost somebody, whether it's a mother, a spouse, somebody close to them, and just share with the audience now what what you had to go through because we're going to talk about your eventual move down here in 2022, but for anybody that's lost somebody and had these memories in this house, what was that time period and such a lonely time period because half the world or most of the world was shut down for a period mm -hmm. of time. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with this mm -hmm. mysterious illness mm -hmm. at the time. There's no <clears throat> vaccines, your own health, everything that you've gone through. What was that time period from March through that summer like for you? It was, <laughs> I can't even describe it. It was, it was devastating. And it was devastating because it was, and I say this to anyone out there that, that's had a loss, um, it was, um, part of me died with him. Hmm. I, I don't know how else to put Sorry. it. Part of me died with him. That part I will never get back. And that's the part that I didn't realize that that was part of me while he was living. Mm. Because, you know, when people are living, you see him every day, you're sleeping with him, you're eating with him, you, you take it for granted. Yeah. Yeah. You take it for granted, you know. And when you no longer have that to take for granted, it is a space, a void that you cannot fill. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's empty. It's like a whole emptiness. You, you, you go into, uh, it's not a... A depression where I don't want to eat, or because you know I don't miss meals. But um, <laughs> it's not. It's not like I went into a depression where I didn't want to eat, I didn't want to sleep, and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't like that. But it was a subtle depression that I was in. Like you know, um, for uh, I'd say for a couple of months, um, I disliked him. I thought he was selfish to leave me. I felt that he didn't do enough to stay alive. And I said, you know, Caroline, you've been silly, you've been silly, crazy. So a friend of mine said, you know what? You need to talk to a grief counselor. So I did. And I went to three sessions. They were that thing you see, the visual thing on virtual. TV, virtual, virtual. thing. Mm -hmm. And I went to three sessions. And the, 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 lad, the third session, she said to me, she said, listen, she said, um, I'm not going to keep taking your $90 for 45 minutes. She said, because what you're feeling 
is normal. She said, if you didn't have these feelings, that might have been an issue because that means you're housing something inside. She said, but there's nothing wrong with you. She said, most people that lose someone close and dear to them, they feel that they didn't do enough to stay alive because, you know. She said, but you just got to keep in mind, he was sick. He was sick. And I think for me, um, you know, during that time frame, so leading up to 2020, we had all, always been trying to talk you into like, oh, mom, just come to Georgia. At the time, mm -hmm. the conversation was, oh, you and daddy should come right. to Georgia. Um, but my dad is truly or was truly a, a Philly yeah. guy. Right, right. And I knew that. that right. Wasn't gonna and so I always knew that as long as my dad was around, they are never going to set up shop anywhere other than Philadelphia. Well, he had our first house. He was one of the blessings that we had is he was able yeah, to, he was down, able to come to down. See, to but he, but even that, though, and enjoyed it. He, he enjoyed, really enjoyed it. it. Even that, and even seeing the 30, you know, seeing the, 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 the time that he got to spend it, like it still wasn't enough for him to be convinced right. to move to Georgia. Right. right. And so when he passed in 2020, it was, it was my hope. And, and I guess my expectation that, okay, now he's gone. So I know for sure my mom is coming to Georgia. Yeah. And so I remember when he passed, it was March, March. 26th. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like almost immediately after that, or even when we kind of knew that the end was near, I had just put in my mind that, okay, so we have to start preparing for my mom's transition to Georgia because my dad's not there. Yeah. Um, Your brother had a fish. My brother and I had already been talking. So I already knew that his plan was to relocate to That's Georgia, right. right? So I'm like, okay, my mom can't stay up there by herself. We need to start planning that. And so I remember that I was completely, um, I won't say devastated, hurt but, but I had hurt feelings because I remember when he passed and it wasn't like, oh, he passed on March 26th, on March 27th, I'm saying, mom, book your flight. But a few months had passed. And I remember throwing out there again, like, hey, mom, now might be the time for us to start thinking about how to get you down here and stuff like that. And at that time, you were very like, stop rushing me. Don't keep asking. I don't want to come down there. When I want to come down there, I'll let you know already. And I remember being like to you, okay, mom, I'm not going to press, you know, whenever you want to let me know, let me know. Mm -hmm. But to you, I remember that I was really, my yeah, was hurt. Was I was hurt. hurt. Cause I was like, I don't understand. Because at that time, I, I always thought about it. Like you would have been here sooner but daddy was your setback because he was like, I'm not going there. And because that was who you were married to and all those things, that was why you weren't coming. So to me, when he passed, it was like, okay, no offense, dad, but obstacle gone. Mom, come on now. We have a place for you. I mean, you were like, stop rushing me. I don't want to come down there. <laughs> I really was hurt. Let me tell you something, Curtis. I am, regardless of what anybody may think, Anybody might say, I am in Georgia today because of you. I am in Georgia today because of you, son. We opened her surgeries and um, a whole slew of other little things going on. But when I made a decision of if you haven't already, make sure you set your notifications and subscribe to Behind the Front Door Podcast.